Um, so this is now time for our second session um, of this um, one hour session and very much looking forward uh, to this one. I think it's going to be quite interactive. So I'm just sharing your slides now. You should be able to see those. Thank you. OK, so without further ado, let me hand over to Louise. OK, thank you very much for joining this session and thank you very much to Alt for accepting my uh, proposal. Um, so this is about a pre-COVID uh, trial or pilot um, that, that got cut short in March. Uh, we were trying out hybrid delivery of academic writing working workshops, and uh, but in the long run, it proved to be quite uh, useful. So I should um, be honest, I am not a learning technologist and I'm definitely not an expert in hybrid delivery in any form. Um, I'm an academic writing tutor who happens to be very enthusiastic about um, using technology however uh, however I, we can um, to support learning and uh, we thought we'd have a go. I, I'm, in a t I'm lucky enough to be in a team who thought we'll, we'll have a go at this. So I work in a, a very small unit um, within the uh, UCL Institute of Education. So that's a faculty within uni uni University College London, uh, the Academic Writing Centre. Um, and I'm, I've also got responsibility for our online uh, digital provision, although I don't have responsibility now for everything we do that's online. OK, um, so uh, about this session. Sorry, just trying to move my slide. Yep, there we go. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the hybrid trial uh, that we tried, um, something about the, the context and rationale. And as, as I say, very much from a practitioner perspective. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about what we did um, and then I'll share with you some student feedback from both the face to face and um, online participants. Uh, when we get to the reflections and discussion, um, hopefully there'll be time for a short breakout group um, discussion on this because um, I'm expecting the audience here to know quite a bit, a lot about this and perhaps or quite likely uh, more than I do. So um, I'm hoping to learn from uh, from 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 your perspectives um, and, and take um, critical you know critical uh, feedback um, and suggestions as well as questions. Um, but before we start, um, sorry, actually though the poll, sorry, I'm getting um, mixed up. Um, the poll, uh, I, it, sorry, it's the next part. So uh, just to start with, I don't want to patronise people with definitions of hybrid because I'm sure you know. Uh, um, and I'm probably stating the obvious, but these are the definitions that we, we referred to when we started out. So in particular, Jesse Strommel, Strommel's um, explanation of hybrid. Um, and as he says, at the basic level, it can be seen as learning that happens both in the classroom and uh, or other physical space and online. Um, however, as you probably know, he goes on to suggest uh, that hybrid pedagogy challenges our conception of place as presence, as Nathan and David were just saying. Um, and that it's not just about an easy mix, that it's um, that, that it can bring about um, learning uh, that, that happens in, in new ways and perhaps more engaged and, and dynamic uh, conversations, um, which was something that appealed to us in particular. Um, I think Nathan and David also mentioned um, Australian um, work on this. And so we did look to uh, Bauer et al's uh, case studies on blended synchronous, which is what it was called. Um, and uh, they, they were very helpful to look at, although we didn't find any of the case studies were particularly similar to our contacts, but nevertheless, they were inspiring. OK, so before we proceed, um, uh, I've got a little poll that I think uh, I think is, a, is ready. Just a quick question um, and you can answer this. So are, are you currently um, involved? Here it is. Yeah. I, um, are you or have you been involved in hybrid provision? Um, the possible answers are yes. No, not sure yet. Um, thank you very much. Yes, I guess the not sure yet might mean I, I may well be but don't know yet. Thank you for sharing that. So that's interesting. So majority of people here um, have been or are involved in hybrid delivery. So it'll be interesting to hear um, what you have to say um, a bit later. OK, I'm going to um, hide the poll now. Thank you. So uh, 
moving on to so firstly i'll tell you a little bit about our um context so um who are um the Institute of Education students, so that's the faculty that I work in, anybody who's just joined. Um, who are the students, or particularly who are the ones that um, opt to come to the Academic Writing Centre? Because um, although uh, all of them, and that's and now about 8,300, are enrolled on our Moodle because they're auto-enrolled, uh, we only see um, a fraction of them. So they are mostly po um, on postgraduate taught courses, for example, Masters in Education, and related dis disciplines or teacher training courses, but also doctoral programs and increasingly undergraduate. Approximately one third are classified as international students and of the home students, many are part time or working full time in education alongside their studies. So teachers, teaching assistants, special educational needs coordinators, head teachers sometimes and so on. And a very significant proportion are uh, mature students returning um, to higher education. So the job of the Academic Writing Centre is to offer a range of academic writing development opportunities uh, to those that would like to um, take, take this up. So uh, what are our general approaches to doing this, um, whether it's face to face or online or hybrid? Well, we follow an, what's known as an academic literacies approach, which recognizes the complexity and discipline or program specific nature of academic writing. So we avoid what um, could be seen as what we would see as oversimplistic and prescriptive writing solutions. Um, so it's not what is sometimes known as a study skills uh, model or um, one that sees the development of, um, of writing as related to language necessarily or a deficiency in the students. So it's not that the students can't do it, it's that the students are moving from one discipline to another or one context to another uh, or even between modules and um, uh, and and that can be challenging in terms of the the writing uh, requirements or norms okay so um in that way it's very much um about shared um investigation um critical uh, critically um examining um examples of academic writing it's social and dialogic and and this is relevant to doing it in a hybrid context because um, what we what we prefer is uh, loud classes where um, where it's more about student involvement stu and there's much more um, student talking time than facilitator uh, uh, or tutor talking time and as I say we're we're we see ourselves as facilitators uh, rather than you know um, we uh, sort of tut well we are tutors but we are mainly facilitators who set things up so in terms of, um, you might be familiar with Darren Larillard's uh, six learning types, um, there's not really that much um, acquisition. Um, students will tend to do that, so the reading, the preparation, et cetera. They'll tend to do that before or after the session. Uh, we, we try to uh, have sessions where there's active inquiry. So for example, students looking at uh, sample writing, plenty of discussion, so for instance, arguing and debating um, or questioning uh, writing practices. Um, and lots of collaboration. But there are some examples um, in the appendix uh, to these slides. So um, why did we uh, decide to try hybrid? So um, I'll tell you in a minute, but we, we, we well, I'll tell you the time frame in a minute. But um, so firstly, it was a practical thing. It was overcome, but to overcome uh, barriers to uh, provision and, um, and, and accessibility, really. So uh, we couldn't get any more, um, any more classrooms. And we wanted to increase our capacity. In fact, there was some pressure to increase our capacity. Um, we also wanted to provide more opportunities for students who were class distance students. And so we were off, we are, we, and we do offer, well, we did offer webinars. Um, uh, but we thought, well, if we, sometimes we've got teaching rooms, um, smaller teaching rooms, but it would be nice if the online participants could join and, uh, and we could get the online and campus based students um, together, um, working together. And um, we also noticed a change in student demographics, although that might just be our experience of the people that decided to come to the um, academic writing students. So particular, in particular commuter students um, um, or, you know, and students who uh, maybe came to campus one day a week for their main uh, course, but really didn't have time to come in another day or an evening or whatever. So that was another reason. Um, so further, um, inspiration uh, came from our colleagues in the UCL um, Knowledge Lab 
uh, and we consulted them. So we actually attended some sessions that were essentially hybrid uh, quite a while back. And we thought, well, why can't we do this? I'm sure we can do this. Now, the type, these sessions were more talks and panel discussions where there was a presenter and then like, like this type of session or like the sessions here. Um, rather than workshops. So we did consult the Knowledge Lab and thought, well, how, how do you think we could do this? Um, we were very inspired by uh, Jesse Stommel's um, hybrid pedagogy and the case studies um, that I just mentioned from Australia. Um, we were also very interested in uh, and inspired by research by Leslie Gawley, who happened to be our line manager at the time, and Martin Oliver into how students uh, engage with the digital university, so um, devices they're using, and I'm sure there's there's lots of other research out there that looks at this, um, how and where uh, they're studying, you know, in the park, um, uh, on the move, in the bath even, I, I remember one, one example from that book, and this actually resonated, not the bath part, but this resonated with me also as a former open university student and full-time parent, and uh, some of the stories there really, I thought, yes, that's exactly how I felt um, uh, about, uh, uh, well, I didn't have to, as an open university student, I didn't have to attend anything live and, or sorry, an, anything um, on campus um, and uh, that, not live, uh, but that was um, a great advantage um, and the opportunity to just pop in. And finally, there was um, a strategic objective to, uh, uh, to just, you know, to bring, um, connect students with each other. And we interpreted that as, yeah, students who were on campus and students who were across the world, distant students. Although I can't really say that the uh, digital infrastructure was all, always there at the early stage um, to, uh, to support that. But however, um, uh, we were very lucky that we found um, an audiovisual um, support colleague who who was um, very, who, who helped us with that. Okay, so um, our pilot. Um, how did we do this? Uh, it started officially in uh, October 2019. Or um, although two of us had been dabbling with hybrid for a few months and you know making a lot of mistakes uh, between October and March before um, we had to stop. Uh, uh, we ran 27 hybrid sessions, mainly writing work workshops, but also um, all day um, writing retreats. And so I should, um, it's quite important to say that the, this was opt-in and this was run alongside um, other, um, other provision, other opt-in and um, uh, provisions such as webinars, um, asynchronous um, tutorials, etc. And then um, program specific embedded writing support, which was also included uh, hybrid but it was quite um, done in quite a different way. Um, the numbers aren't huge but um, we had uh, 304 um, hybrid attendances but that they were 304 extra attendances um, so yes more people would come to face-to-face -face sessions only but these were uh, 304 people who um, who wouldn't have come to the face-to-face -face, so they joined a face-to-face -face in, in a sense. So um, yeah um uh yeah so how um how, how exactly you know how in in terms of um how how we went about it so this was uh blackboard collaborate uh the, so the physical classroom and uh blackboard collaborate ultra which is where we are now uh we did it um this was a bit contentious but we did it with just one tutor facilitator with some um audio visual support um that wasn't um all, altogether popular but if we'd um put two of us then it would it would have defeated the object of increasing capacity we couldn't get more tutors so um our aim was to uh to get just get more students uh, joining who couldn't otherwise join um <coughs> the in terms of what the students um did the collaborate screen was visible to the face-to-face -face participants and we made full use um sometimes not sometimes quite chaotically or initial of chat, um, these, the face-to-face -face students could see the, the chat on the screen, they could see the uh, online participants typing and drawing. Um, uh, we use breakout, so when, when the face-to-face -face students went into uh, breakout groups, the online, uh, sorry, went into small groups, the breakout, uh, we use breakout groups for the online uh, participants and we use polls, screen sharing, etc. <laughs> we tried to um, get the uh, the campus-based students and the online participants together as much as possible uh, using microphone and camera where we could. Um, I'm not saying we did, always did it that well, but importantly, uh, we told the students that this was something we were trialing. Um, and if they preferred not to attend these sessions, they could go to face-to-face -to -face, um, sessions or just webinars if they preferred. 
So, um, we invited students to give anonymous feedback after each session. So, um, online for the participant, the online participants did it um, in Moodle feedback, and the face-to-face -face actually did it in um, on post-its um, uh, for a while, which we collected. And here are some um, some examples. So. Many comments were from students who appeared to be London based or relatively close, um, but who appreciated uh, being able to attend uh, the face to face session online, so not having to come in. OK, um, the second quote is from a student who attended a hybrid writing um, session and seemed very pleased to be able to connect with other student writers. And um, that we also got some uh, quite a lot of suggestions um, and particularly in relation to great breakout groups, which we found quite heartening. Um, you know, could they be longer, please? Um, uh, that, that was quite um, common, um, even if they took a little while to get um, to get going. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we had expected the face to face participants to be um, less satisfied, but many were quite enthusiastic and had some additional suggestions. Um, so, for example, um, this one, uh, the first one um, would have liked to have been able to join the um, Collaborate chat and use the other um, Collaborate, uh, sorry, BBC should back, Black or Collaborate um, interactive tools um, as a face to face student. So we didn't do that initially um, and uh, probably lack of administration and time to set that up, but it's easily done. And we think we would definitely do that next time. Um, and a lot of online students mentioned the convenience of being able to attend um, while doing something else, even if it was just part of the session and they couldn't necessarily participate in ways that might have been expected. So um, what we found interesting was the patterns of engagement were becoming more complex, um, but arguably interesting. And I think, again, David and Nathan have re just referred to that um, uh, in, in, in terms of what we what we consider attendance and um, engagement. So uh, quite a lot of students seem to be engaging. But, you know, I particularly like the last one. I thought that was great. You know, sorry, my, my, it was brilliant. My baby stayed asleep for the whole two hours. That, that's why I couldn't talk or and I wasn't really able to, to type much, but I found it really useful. So anyway, so I probably shared the positive feedback, but there were also um, it's particularly initially um some some uh very helpful um suggestions uh, but broadly it was quite um quite uh positive so <coughs> excuse me um these are some of the uh the reflections that uh that, that i have and that i've sort of thought that are worth discussing but i'm sure there are um many more so we'll be back on campus no earlier than january and then the academic writing center will probably only get a classroom for half a day um, if we get anything uh, we may we may still be um working fully online we're not core position provision so we don't um, get priority which is you know fine as well um so the, and we expect the ratio of when we do go back to the hybrid we expect the ratio of online and face-to-face -face attendances to uh, to change and maybe in a good way. So, um, and of course, there we're, they'll continue to be more asynchronous provision. That is uh, what the university is suggesting. But we still get quite a few requests and feedback. Um, ongoing student uh, feedback does suggest that they appreciate um, synchronous um, sessions too. So we want to offer um, both. Um, in terms of developing and improving our hybrid workshops, uh, we've still got a lot to learn. Um, you know, particularly how to make them interactive and dialogic, but not always chaotic. Um, and I wonder what um, considerations um, you think we need to, uh, you know, here in order to improve that. And perhaps you've got examples of good practice that we could learn from. Um, a question that um, was asked by some of my colleagues were, you know, how there are there two cohorts? I don't actually agree that there are two cohorts. I think it's a new kind of cohort, or perhaps several. Perhaps we can think of it, think of it differently. But you know, how how um, uh, how to um, uh, how to sort of join the the, the two the two <clears throat> excuse me uh, two co uh, cohorts and you know I agree with um, uh, Jesse Stommel that it's not an easy mix or a straightforward mix. So any ideas on that? And and again, um, as was mentioned in the previous session, you know complexity in engagement pat um, patterns. So what do we um, consider to be active participation? Um, to what extent is it okay if people drop in and out, etc. Uh, you know, how do, how do we manage that? What should we expect? So um, 
looking at the time, I think there is a uh, time for breakout groups, if that's OK. Um, and I think it was agreed that I was going to set these up. So if that's OK with people, I'm going to uh, break out groups. Here we go. A uh, number of groups. So there are 41 participants. So if we go for eight, eight groups uh, random, randomly assigned. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think it include, includes the moderators, but I guess you can take yourselves out if you want to. Um, so that would be um, so five minutes, if that's OK, everybody, to discuss your experiences of hybrid, your recommendations, your suggestions, anything that um, you've got to share. And so we'll come back in five minutes um, abruptly, if, that, if that's OK. Um, so is that OK if I start that? Yeah, um, go for it. And thank you very we'll much. Stop, yeah, we'll stop it thank after you. five minutes. Thank you. Hi there. Let me know if you need help getting people back. But, um, Hi, Martin. No, um, she asked for five minutes, and I've randomly yeah. moved people around groups as well. Brilliant. Um, sorry, I'm, I hope uh, that's okay that I came back to the main room. Um, sorry. Yep, not a problem at all. Uh, no. Yeah, because I thought I'm, I'm kind of eavesdropping. Um, yeah. I noticed a lot of people left when we did the breakout group, so maybe it wasn't the best idea. I just thought I'd try it. Yeah, um, I, I, my general experience is people <laughs> just give the prospect of people actually having. <laughs> they, yeah. Uh, they, okay. They, they decide to drop out, but um, um, but I, I think it's you know, in terms of interactive, I think it's actually a good thing. So, um, I'm, I'm glad I can use this. It's okay, it for you. Sorry, I can't can't hear you very well actually. But oh, that might be my microphone. Oh. Yep, you're a little bit muffly, Martin. Okay, so I think there's another two minutes on the breakout room. Is that okay, Louise? Yeah. I wonder if, uh, okay, so some microphones are moving, but not that many. So I'm wondering whether to bring people back. What do you think? Or is that um, I dishonest? Think I, we said, yeah. 
he said five I mean, minutes. It's, it's, I only, it's only one minute short of what we said. So yeah, I you're right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. Are what you agreeing to bring them back? Yeah. 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 Okay, I think everybody's back in the main room. So, um, are there any questions or any any uh, feedback, um, observations, suggestions? Um, and you know, I'm quite happy for people to to take the microphone here if that's okay. Oh, that's interesting. A couple of people said needed longer. Uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. If you do have any questions and would like to ask over the microphone, if you raise your hand, then we can um, activate your microphone for you, or alternatively, you can put them into the chat. Actually, um, interesting what um, Sandra says about um, it being abrupt. So that's something that, um, yeah, it seems to happen. It um, unless we go into the different groups and say, right, we're we're bringing you back now. So, um, so in the classes, we sort of say, well, you will get transported back very abruptly but abrupt is the word uh, we use so that's why um it's something that i sort of <laughs> learned quite quickly was to to um ask the groups to time to time themselves and uh, uh it was too short to make connections yeah sorry about that hopefully that can continue yeah yeah so, so Sandra says maybe some of our on campus students did not want to learn online and this this hindered their adoption of hybrid yeah um, okay that's interesting about oh, a nice thing about zoom is that there's a one minute reminder okay that's default great because we're getting zoom at UCL okay if there aren't any questions then um thank you very much for for joining and participating and um my email address is there if you've got anything else that you want to suggest or ask me about thanks okay. very much well thank you so much louise if we could all give louise a big round of applause um over our chat function that would be absolutely fantastic i really enjoyed that and like the interactivity as well so thank you so much for that presentation and of course uh, our recordings um, are on the resources page of the platform and we are collating all of the slides that you've been provided with from our presenters uh, to put them on there as well. Um, so that brings this session to a close um, and the program now has a short break where you can go to the virtual cafe on your lunch if you would like to. Uh, you can use a social bingo. Uh, you can have a look at the participant directory or the jobs board and then we kick back off at three o'clock with a keynote from uh, Bonnie Stewart and Dave Cormier. So once again, thank you so much, Louise and everybody. Um, have a lovely rest of the summit. <laughs>